A strange man wearing a cloak enters a really dark cave, where a voice from nowhere warns him to leave or he will run mad. The voice comes from a deity called the Scare Glow who feeds on people fear and he is the leader of the underworld, otherwise known as Subternia in this universe. The man wearing a cloak reveals his identity as Adam, the Prince of Eternia and defender of the secret of Castle Grey Skull. He also came along with his friend Orko, a sorcerer. They explain that they didn't come to fight but their friends were sent to the underworld by their enemy Skeletor. They ask Scare Glow to let them leave the land of the dead with the souls of their friends, who died as heroes and be placed in a better place than this. Scare Glow refuses their offer and instead moves forward to take their souls and add to his collection. Seeing a fight is inevitable, Prince Adam calls on the power of Grey Skull and transforms into He Man, the hero of Eternia. Scare Glow orders his shadow beasts to kill them but Prince Adam turned out to be prepared for this. He had also brought his heroic friends and they all have unique abilities which they use to assist him in the fight. Part of the people who came to assist him is the King of Eternia, who brought his man-at-arms along too. With one powerful kick, Scare Glow is subdued. That is when another friend of theirs called Tila shows up and uses her magic to take down Scare Glow's shadow beasts. The heroes quickly move out of the underworld and just as Scare Glow tries to get out and strike them, Tila uses her magic to seal down the underworld. While they all celebrate, it becomes known to us that Adam has feelings for Tila but is afraid to say this to her. But unknown to them all, the king doesn't seem to be okay. Before their eyes, he collapses to the ground. The scene suddenly takes to a place which they call the Snake Mountain, where we see Skeletor who is now under the leadership of the technological motherboard, capturing monsters and initiating them into robots for the Horde Empire. Skeletor once used magic as a weapon but has failed so many times, but after he surrendered himself to the motherboard who uses technology as a weapon was only when he discovered his true potentials. The motherboard meets with the leader of the Horde Empire whose plan is to initiate as many monsters as possible into his clan and form an army that will help him take over the universe. Back to the castle, the doctor informs Prince Adam that the king, his father, is suffering from a kind of organ failure that doesn't have a cure. It turns out the doctor knew about the king's sickness weeks ago, but the king forbade him from sharing his diagnosis with anyone but just the queen. Fighting at the side of Adam was the king's last wish. Adam begs Tila to use her magic to save his father, but the king refuses as death is an inescapable fate for humanity even for kings. King Randor asks everyone to leave the room while he spends his last minute with his two greatest loves Adam and the queen. On the other hand, Tila has been doing something else. She has been trying to rebuild Praternia, which is like heaven in this universe, so the heroic souls will have a place to go. She is so worried because the king is about to die, and if she doesn't restore Praternia, what will really happen to his soul? Orko suggests Tila to seek help from her mother, the former sorceress. King Randor states out his last wishes to his son Adam, whom he wants to become the next king of Eternia and also wants Tila as his wife. Tila Mon tells her the only way she can restore Praternia is by using the three godly powers that once created it. Tila has one in her possession called Zor, but the other two called Ka and Havok Staff are nowhere to be found. To find the Ka symbol, Tila's mother advises her to go the place it was last seen, a very dangerous place called the Dark Smoke. It's dangerous for Eternia to stay a day without a king, so immediately after the king's funeral, Adam coronation is what comes next. Just as Adam gives a speech to the people about following his father's footsteps, a man who introduces himself as the brother of the king show up out of nowhere. He is Keldor, who claims himself to be the rightful successor to the throne. Keldor tells Adam a backstory of when him and his brother Randor sneak to their father's chambers, King Miro. They overhear an argument between King Miro and the queen who wants Keldor to be sent back to his mother's home. We find out that Keldor and Randor are half-brothers born from different mothers. Although Keldor is the first-born child, he cannot be the heir because his mother is from another tribe. To cut the long story short, Keldor has now returned after he was banished by King Miro for years. Although he is the successor to the throne, he states that he doesn't want it, but he has come to assist. Adam is also confused because he can only choose to be the hero and protector of the realm or the king of Eternia. Just during their discussion, an explosion gets their attention. It is Skeletor and the disciples of the motherboard who have come to attack the city. They throw smoke bombs everywhere and the people who inhaled it are turned into half-robots under their control. Everything becomes hard for them because those robots were once citizens of Eternia so the heroes could not kill them. Skeletor unleashes a Techno-Titan to finish them off. Prince Adam chases after Skeletor, while Keldor shows up in front of the man-at-arms, Andra, revealing he has a plan to take down the Techno-Titan.
He asked Orko to tie down the Titan for a few minutes and quickly gives Andra a modification from his Gar wristband and with the help of her blaster, they started to upload the Titan's self-destructive system. Skeletor escapes not before living a child in Adam arms when he also infected with the virus. Adam places his sword of power on the boy's chest and he got healed instantly. Meanwhile, Teela enters the dark smoke to find the Cus symbol. She is confronted by Lord Granamir, a dragon who has the Cus symbol in his possession. She finds out that Lord Granamir is dying and Evil Lynn has been looking after him as a way to seek redemption from her evil deeds. Even though Teela explains to the Lord on how she planned to use the Cus symbol to recreate heaven where she wants the king's soul to go to, Lord Granamir refuses to give it to her because he doesn't trust the humans anymore. When he gave the Cus symbol to her ancestors, they promptly used it to rain down war and death upon this world. All he knows about the human now is their lust for power. Meanwhile, Kelder and Andra finally takes down the Techno Titan, getting praises from the people but the problem is not entirely solved, as some of the citizens are already half robots. The heroes find out that Adam's sword can cure the virus, but they all think of a way to use the sword on all of Eternia at once. The only way this can work is to amplify the range of the sword, so Adam sends Orko and Duncan to the only man who can do so. Adam finally makes a choice on what he really wants. He decided to continue his heroic adventures as He-Man, and seeing Keldor possesses the quality of a good leader because of his contributions in saving Eternia from Skeletor, Prince Adam crowns him the new king of Eternia. Evil Lynn joins Tila in convincing Lord Granomir, who finally agrees to give her the Kai symbol, but only after she solves his riddle. What is that thing you take and live more behind? Tila solves the riddle with an answer called Footsteps. Lord Granomir passes the cow powers to her, but there is something we never knew. Kelder isn't who we think he is. He is actually Skelector in disguise, while the person we thought to be Skeletor was actually the motherboard. Their plan finally worked as they now have the authority of Eternia in their hands. Next episode begins with a man called Stondar, who has been captured by a master of the Horde's empire, Hordak. Hordak destroyed his world and captured his people. Stondar challenges Hordak to a fight in which if he wins, his people should be set free. But Hordak never does his own fighting. He orders his hired mercenaries to kill Stondar immediately. Hordak is informed by the motherboard how they have smartly made Skeletor the king of Eternia disguise as Keldor, with the kingdom of Eternia now in their hands. Skeletor later sees a reflection of Keldor who informs him how the Horde Empire has been deceiving him all this while. Skeletor is actually Keldor himself, whose memories were wiped out by Hordak and the Havoc Staff given to him corrupted his appearance to turn him into the gnarly, monstrous Skeletor. Plotting revenge against his current masters, Motherboard and Hordak, Skeletor decides to proceed with the plan for the time being. As the King of Eternia, Skeletor disguises Keldor, sends Adam to the Snake Mountain to take the war to the enemy front. Andra the Man-at-Arms wants to join Adam, but he told her to stay behind as a backup plan. Andra is furious as she has always been pushed aside. King Keldor uses this moment to go on with his evil plan. He states out his plan to Andra about turning the people into half-robots so they will be able to protect themselves without the need of Adam, but he can't accomplish this alone as he needs a big brain like her. Andra tells King Keldor to count on her. On the other hand, according to Adam's wishes, Duncan, the former man-at-arms, takes Orko to Gwildor, the legendary blacksmith, to imbue the Sword of Power with both sorcery and technology to unlock its hidden potential. While Adam attacks the Snake Mountain, King Keldor places a kind of magnet on the people one by one, saying it will make them stronger to protect themselves. Adam, after seeing the crown of Keldor, realizes that this is all a setup. King Keldor sent him here to distract him, so the motherboard can enter Grey Skull. In case you don't know, Grey Skull is the source of magic of Eternia, and it's where Adam gets his powers. The motherboard takes over it using her technology, making Adam powerless. Worst of all is King Keldor uses the magnet he placed on the people to turn them into his mindless robot army under his control. Andra realizes that she was only used in his evil plan. Hordak and his Horde army arrives to take full control over Eternia. Adam is captured only for him to find out that Keldor is actually Skeletor. Prince Adam is placed inside a prison with his queen mother. Skeletor tells him on how he will kill everyone he loves before his eyes and then will take Adam's life too. Upon hearing about the Horde invasion, Tila and Evil Lynn return to Eternia to help the remaining noble warriors fight against the aggressors. Tila thinks of a way to save Adam, but Lynn advises her that taking the last godly symbol called the Havoc Staff from Skeletor is more important, because if they have the power of three gods combined, they can use that to save Adam and send Hordak packing. Two of Hordak Robot tries to attack them from behind, but Duncan takes down the robot down thanks to his new tech suit.
He left Orko with Gwildor, who is still enhancing the Sword of Power to join Tila and Lynn to save Adam. While at the Horde's prison with his mother, Adam loses all hopes because he is not with his sword which can break through the interference of the virus and his powers cannot be called back without it. The queen, his mother, tells him that his sum total of his powers doesn't really come from Grey Skull. Love, courage, and the willingness to fight his power too. Listening to the advice of his inner self, Skeletor doesn't want to do the serving anymore, but he instead wants to master the universe. Firstly, he kills the motherboard and then challenges the authority of Hordak. Andra the man-at-arms help Adam and his mother escape out of prison. Instead of pushing her aside like he always does, Adam wants her to join him in curing every citizen of this techno-virus, but since he doesn't have the power of He-Man, he needs to firstly find a way into his father's armory. The good news now is Gwildor is done with enhancing the Sword of Power. They just have to get past the monsters in front of them to get to Adam. Skeletor fights with Hordak over the rulership of the Horde Empire. Every skill he knows Hordak already taught him, so he tells Skeletor that there is no move he can make that he hasn't already anticipated. Lin uses the fight between the Skeletor and Hordak as an opportunity to steal Skeletor's staff of Havok and give it to Tila. Skeletor proved to has one thing Hordak doesn't have which is magic, and with it, he killed Hordak with a sword through his heart. Lin takes the Havoc staff from Skeletor, while Andra and the rest of the heroes are having a hard time fighting half-robot citizens because they don't want to hurt them. Lin show up with the Havoc staff and informs Adam and the other heroes what she witnessed. Skeletor isn't actually Skeletor anymore. He has somehow synthesized both magic and technology, so he is powerful than ever and more dangerous, coming for them all. Now having the three godly symbols in her possession, Tila unites them together but in the process, she almost loses herself in the powerful surge. At the dying moment, Orko and Gwildor shows up with the upgraded Sword of Power and gives it to Adam which he uses to her rescue by containing the surge. With the perfect assimilation of science and sorcery, He-Man and Tila emerge in a new, ascended form and join the battle against Skeletor and the Horde army. Tila goes to channel her power to bring back the heavens, and Orko and Lin are to protect her as she does so. Duncan and Andra are to fight the Horde army. Adam confronts Skeletor and uses the enhanced sword of power to cure the techno-virus from the people, returning them back to their normal selves. Now the final battle we have all been waiting for begins as Adam engages in a fight with Skeletor. In his efforts to save the Eternians, Granomir shows up and battles a gigantic tech monster, sacrificing his life. Motivated by his sacrifice, Tila channels her newfound powers to perfection to restore heaven. King Randor's soul helps his son in his battle against Skeletor before joining his brave fallen comrades in the heavenly realm of with the soul of the former sorceress. With the enhanced sword of power, Adam defeats Skeletor. The show ends as Adam grants the power to the people to govern themselves and he marries Tila at the end. Thank you for watching guys. If you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Bye.